Привет! Сегодня наша обучалка по поводу компаса Orientation Exam. Наверное, ты уже об этом слышал, либо делал когда-нибудь, либо уже заваливал, либо прошел, потому что если ты это прошел, тебе это уже не интересно. Но те, кто собирается пройти компас и собирается набрать 7 и 7 на имя Orientation, то это обучалочка для вас, поэтому начинаем. And I think it's gonna be in English, because it's easier for me, easy for you, and the whole test will be in English. So the explanation will be in English. Before I go into details, guys, I would like you to understand the uh, basic, simple stuff that you need to know. Uh, this is how it will look like on your real exam. Because I don't know which uh, website you use, that's what you will see on your real exam. There are three main parts. Basically, first of all, read the goddamn task I'm telling you. And number two is going to be time related. Because uh, I'm going to have a stopwatch and I'm going to have a 10 minutes. Then, practice means everything. The more you do, the better you become. I think it's in everything in life, especially at landings, on takeoff. Everything that pilots do, it's all about practice. That means you have to do some practice before you go on your real exams. And my goal for you guys, after we finish my tutorial, you're gonna have to spend only 15 seconds per task. Only 15 seconds. And I will do my best of explaining you guys how things are done. Number one and the most important stuff, read the goddamn task. Because when you read it properly, you know what's the deal here. So basically, you don't have to study those instruments before you come, because this is assessment of your ability to use the readings of these aircraft instruments. So basically, you have to be able to just read those instruments. That's it. And don't forget, it is all about the timing. And my technique here, please listen carefully, I want you to finish all examples before clock stops. Once again, finish everything before the clock stops, because otherwise you're gonna fail. Let's imagine you've done 20 of the examples correctly, like 100%, but you don't know that there are 15 more, which is considered to be zero. Think about it, and please finish every single example before the clock stops. That's my number one advice for you guys. And here I try to explain my method, which worked for me, worked for a lot of people, and hopefully it will work for you. Let's go back to our instruments. What I want you to start with reading is a simple compass. I guess most of us relatively know how the compass looks like and how to read it. It basically points you in the direction of where you fly, where your nose flies and the arrow points in the direction where you fly. It can be on your real exam, instead of the arrow it can be the plane. So make sure you, you read that instrument correctly. And it's a not a rocket science to read a compass. So basically and simply where it flies. That's where you start, guys. That's number one in reading the instrument. So first read the heading of the plane. Number two is one of the confusing ones is a relative bearing indicator. But for those who doesn't know any idea about bearings and stations and navigation, I'll try to explain in a simple way. So guys, please imagine a house, just a house in a field, and you in the plane are just flying over that field. And you fly over that house, behind that house, left of the house, right of the house. So that needle or arrow will always point you to the house. Because it's lo it loves it. Or imagine that this needle or this arrow is a snitch. It always show you where the house is. That's a simple way of understanding how to read that. If you understand the concept of a house and a needle, you're gonna easily read that instrument. And to even more simplify or to stop, so look at the instrument. And I wrote you that down there are two parts, left part and the right part, and forward and back. So the arrow or the needle 
will always show you, for example, left front, right back, or right front, right back, parallel, in front of the station. And looking at that example is just basically the house is behind the plane. That's what you need to understand. Let me give you an example. I'm sorry for my drawings, but if you look here, we see that house or the station and we see the plane flying to that house. And what do you think, guys, Needle will show you? So, it's obviously that the house is left front side of the plane. Look at this picture and, and just visualize where you, that your house is in front of you, in front to the left. So you're the pilot in the plane and you see the house in front of the left. So that needle always will show you like that. So it's front, left. I want you to pause the video right now and think about it. It doesn't matter where your heading is, the needle will always show you to the station. Doesn't matter where. So look at this example. And number three, the easiest one, is artificial horizon. Basically, we can all read that. So yellow is the ground, blue is the sky, that symbol is the plane, that's the wings of the plane. So in the compass example, there can be actually one, two, three, four, five, six options. It's either climbing or descending, or it's either climbing and turning to the left, climbing and turning to the right, in aviation called bank or it's descending and turning to the left and descending and turning to the right it's pretty easy to read so again guys this instrument is really pretty easy to read and the final exam guys before you look at any instruments any planes what I've taught you today what we learned together you always have to start with compass so the direction of the plane you look at this example, so it flies to the west. That means number two is already gone. We only have number one, number three, and number four. After that, what I've taught you, go to RBI. Where is that station? So, we fly and the needle, the arrow shows that the station is completely behind. So, number three, number four, the station is to the right. That means we don't have to even look to artificial horizon knowing that the correct answer is number one. But again, make sure that you look at artificial horizon because when you're going to do your real exam and the last 10 or 15 examples are going to be super extra hard. So it can be a little bit confusing. So if we look at the artificial horizon and the arrow shows you down, that means it's descending and the plane is in the yellow zone, that's definitely the answer is number one. And again, guys, to summarize this super technique by Kabish, how to do that compass task, number one is the heading, where is this nose fly? Number two is RBI, and where is the station? Is it in front of you or behind, left, right? And number three is artificial horizon. What is our plane doing? Climbing or descending or turning left or right, not banking. So guys, use these three simple steps and don't forget about the time. And the time will come with practice. First, when you start doing that, take your time, read the instruments carefully. And after that, you're gonna do it like a super master. Good luck all of you guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and if you would like to see more of my stuff or my life, please subscribe on my social media and I hope to see you again. Have fun! Don't forget, aviation is not a rocket science, it's simple.